Good afternoon, my name is Camry Robinson, and today I'm going to talk to you about imaging processes in liquids with nanoscale resolution using graphene. So, to image samples with a nanoscale resolution, we use what is called a transmission electron microscope, or TEM. And these, ele these microscopes work, work, work by transmitting a beam of electrons through the surface of a thin sample, which produces images with a sub-nanometer sub resolution of about 0.2 nanometers. And because these electron microscopes operate under a high vacuum, they are typically limited to imaging fixed dry samples. So if we wanted to image a dynamical process that occurred in a liquid, we would be unable to do this directly using the TEM because most liquids that are put exposed to the environment of the TEM will quickly evaporate. So what people typically use, what people, people usually do to image these dynamical processes in liquids is they mix a solution and they take a snapshot during the process at a certain time. And then they start, this, they start the process over and they take a snapshot at a later time. And then they repeat this until they have a bunch of snapshots that they can put together and merge and make one dynamical movie. So this works much like a flip book when you have a series of pictures and you flip through it rapidly and it makes the picture appear to be animated. So these are some examples of dynamical processes that occur in a liquid. The picture at the top is a picture of nanocrystals aggregating, aggregating nanocrystals. If we if we were to study the, dynamic, the dynamics of this, we would know how they nucleate and how they grow, and then we would be able to grow them ourselves. Other processes such as interfacial phenomena, electro deposition and etching, and bubble growth are other examples, and also biological processes such as the one at the bottom. And over here we have biological macromolecules, and in this case it's actin and myosin. And here they use the flipbook technique where they took different snapshots, and it, it helps us understand how this uh, molecular motor walks across this thread. But if we slow this down, we will see that some of the images are missing. Some of the, if we slow it, looked at it frame by frame, some pieces are mis missing to this picture. And although this technique works, it's very tedious, and we don't know the most significant times to take um, the snapshots, so we can overlook important observations. So the Nano Aquarium is the solution to all of this. It was created here at Penn by Grogan and Bao, and what it does, it allows us to observe these dynamical processes in a liquid directly without the liquid evaporating. So it is composed of two silicon substrates with a thin layer of silicon nitride, silicon nitride membrane that are sandwiched together with silicon oxide acting as a thin spacer. Then two electron transparent windows are etched into the substrates and it allows for the TEM to image, um, image samples. So this is actually um, a video taken with the TEM of bubble growth, and it, showed, it, it was taken with the nano aquarium. So this video is actually in real time, and it, no, nothing is missing from it. So we'll be able to observe this directly and understand it better if we were to use the flipbook technique. So our goal for this summer was to take the silicon nitride membrane and replace it with graphene. We wanted to use graphene because it is the thinnest and strongest membrane. It has a, one, a single atom thick layer and about 130 gigapascals of ultimate tensile strength. And the thickness of it was so thin it, allows a, a better, it would allow a better resolution using the TEM. It also has high electrical, high electrical and thermal conductivities, which will allow the the heat from the beam of the TEM to transfer quickly through the graphene, which will prevent leakage and radiation damage to the sample. And also the, the lighter and smaller atoms of the graphene, um, they allow for a better contrast. Uh, compared to silicon, silic silicon nitride, they have, silicon has a heavier, larger atoms. So, the graphene we use is grown on copper foil, so we have to figure out a way to transfer the copper foil, transfer the graphene from the copper foil onto the substrate. So we first did this by applying a thin layer of PMMA on top of the graphene. 
Then using a power supply, we hooked up the positive lead to a solution of sodium hydroxide and the negative lead to the graphene. And as we slowly dip the graphene into the solution, the graphene and PM PMMA slowly peels away from the copper foil. Then we rinse the graphene in three different beakers using just DI water. And then a silicon substrate is used to pick up the graphene and then it is placed on a hot plate so that the graphene can bind to the, to the substrate. Then we put it in an acetone bath for 30 minutes at room temperature and then for another 30 minutes on the hot plate. And then the PMMA slowly etches away, which leaves us with our final product of graphene in the substrate. So going through this project, we had to find a spacer that we wanted to use. First, we decided, well, we used Mylar for testing purposes, but we cannot use Mylar for the final device because it was too thick. So we went on to Capton, which was supposed to be used for the final device. However, it posed too many complications because we realized it wrinkled easily, which would um, bring on difficulties later because we need, needed everything to be flat. So we then decided to just apply another layer of PMMA on top and use it as the spacer. And then using UV light techniques, we created the liquid chamber, which is in this case is just a hole of 100 microns in diameter. And we cut it through the PMMA. So we, in this case, we're working with a very, very small volume of liquid. So we use carbon-coated micropipettes to get the liquid into the liquid chamber. We had to cover the carbon-coated micropipettes with OTS hydrophobic solution in order to get the liquid to drop more easily from the pipette. So this right here is also a pipette. Um, we use this to inject the liquid into the carbon-coated mi micropipette. We attach this micro loader onto it, and I don't know if you can see the tip, but it's very, very um, tiny in diameter, and it was inserted into the back of the, micro, the carbon coated micro pipette. And then, once the liquid was in it, we connected the carbon coated micro pipette to a pressure injector, which then um, injected a pressure, in helping, which helped the liquid to be released from the carbon coated micro pipette. So, to finalize the device, so now. We have the substrate, and we have the graphene on top, and the PMMA, and now the liquid. So the plan is to put the gold nanoparticles into the liquid chamber, to the image. We use gold nanoparticles because they're just easy to work with for testing purposes. So then we let the liquid, the excess liquid evaporate. Because it was so small, it's very, very hard to get the exact amount of liquid we, need, liquid we needed. So we put just a little bit more, waited to evaporate it, and applied the top layer. The top layer is created using the same technique that the bottom layer was um, made using. And by doing this, we were, we were able to use the TEM to directly image um, the nanoparticles. So as of now, the fabrication of this device is still ongoing um, due to many changes along the way and time constraints. Um, like I said earlier, we had to keep figuring out what space we wanted to use. However, um, we still believe and we hope that when we do finish the fabrication of the device, it will give us a higher resolution and a better contrast when imaging these dynamical processes in liquids at the nanoscale. So um, right now, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the entire Bio Lab, my PI, Dr. Bao, my mentors, Dr. Juan Sukli and Nicholas M. Schneider. Also, Pedro Ducos for growing the graphene and teaching us the techniques to transfer it. Dr. Madeline Diaz, who also worked with um, Pedro Ducos, and Dr. Malaku Malune, who gave us access to his laser machines for the, um, during the research this summer. And I also like to thank the NVIC and the NSF for providing us with this opportunity to research here. And I thank Penn also for allowing us to come into their university and use their equipment. These are my references. So at this time, I'll take any questions that you may have.